Good morning. I am RJ Tugay, and we're live here in Bangkok, Thailand, in continuation of Thailand Adventist Mission's 100 Day in Scriptures, where every day at 6 a.m., we will read 12 chapters from the Bible for 100 days. Yesterday, we started with Miss Pimpa Picha Aditon, who read the first chapters of Genesis with us. And today, we are going to continue chapters 13 to 25. Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Lord and Father, we thank you for waking up us this waking us up this morning with the blessings and the vigor and the energy um, to worship your name and to once again be refreshed with the, the words that you have given to us as we read the Bible, as we read the Bible, dear Father, we ask for the Holy Spirit to be with us so that we will be able to learn from these words and we'll be able to apply it in our journey here on earth. Thank you for your love and your guidance, dear Lord. All these things we pray in Jesus' holy name. Amen. As I've said, today we will be reading Genesis chapters 13 to 25. So if you have your Bibles, um, uh, if you have your Bibles with you, please uh, read with me. Um, today I'm going to read uh, in um, New King James Version. Chapter 13, Abram inherits Canaan. Then Abram went up from Egypt, he and his wife, and all that he had, and lot with him, to the south. Abram was very rich in livestock, in silver and in gold, and he spent on his journey from the south as far as Bethel, to the place where his tent had been at the beginning, between Bethel and Ai, to the place of the altar which he had made there at first. And there Abram called on the name of the Lord. Lot also, who went with Abram, had flocks and herds and tents. Now the land was not able to support them, that they might dwell together. For their possessions were so great that they could not dwell together. And there was strife between the herdsmen of Abram's livestock and the herdsmen of Lot's livestock. And the Canaanites and the Perizzites then dwelt in the land. So Abram said to Lot, Please let there be no strife between you and me, and between my herdsmen and your herdsmen. For we are brethren. Is not the whole land before you? Please separate from me. If you take the left, then I will go to the right. Or if you go to the right, I will go to the left. And Lot lifted his eyes and saw all the plains of Jordan, that it was well watered everywhere, before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, like the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt as you go towards Zor. Then Lot chose for himself all the plain of Jordan, and Lot journeyed east, and they separated from each other. Abram dwelt in the land of Canaan, and Lot dwelt in the cities of the plain, and pitched his tent even as far as Sodom. But the men of Sodom were exceedingly wicked and sinful against the Lord. And the Lord said to Abram, after Lot had separated from him, Lift your eyes now, and look from the place where you are, northward, southward, eastward, and westward. For all the land which you see, I give to you and your descendants forever. And I will make your descendants as the dust of the earth, so that if a man could number the dust of the earth, then your descendants also could be numbered. Arise, walk in the land through its length and its width, for I give it to you. Then Abram moved his tent and went and dwelt by the terebinth trees of Mamre, which are in Hebron, and built an altar there for the Lord. Chapter 14, Lot's Captivity and Rescue and it came to pass in the days of Amraphel, king of Shinar, Ariok, king of Elisar, Shadar Laomer, king of Alam, and Tidal, king of the nations, that they made war with Bera, king of Sodom, Birsha, king of Gomorrah, Shinab, king of Adma, Shemeber, king of Zeboim, and the king of Bela. All these joined together in the valley of Sidon, that is the Salt Sea. Twelve years they served Shadar Laomer, and in the thirteenth year they rebelled. In the fourteenth year of Shadur Laomer, and the kings that were with him came and attacked the Rephaim in Astaroth Karnim, the Susim in Ham, the Emim in Shavek Kiriathim, and the Horites in their mountain of Sire, as far as El Paran, which is by the wilderness. Then they turned back and came to En Mishpat, and attacked all the country of the Amalekites, and also the Amorites, who dwelt in Hazazon Tamar. And the king of Sodom, the king of Gomorrah, the king of Adma, the king of Seboim, and the king of Bela, <laughs> went out and joined together in battle in the valley of Sidon against Shadur Laomer, the king of Elam, Tidal, king of nations, Amraphel, king of Shinar, and Ariok, king of Elisar. Four kings against five. Now the valley of Sidon was full of asphalt pits, 
and the kings of Sodom and Gomorrah fled. Some fell there, and the remainder fled to the mountains. Then they took all the goods of Sodom and Gomorrah, and all their provisions, and went their way. They also took Lot, Abram's brother's son, who dwelt in Sodom, and his goods, and departed. Then one who had escaped came and told Abram the Hebrew, for he dwelt, dwelt by the terebinth trees of Mamre the Amorite, brother of Faskel and brother of Aner, and they were allies with Abram. Now when Abram heard that his brother has, was taken captive, he armed his 318 train servants, who were born in his own house, and went in pursuit as far as then. He divided his forces against them by night, and he and his servants attacked them and pursued them as far as Hoba, which is the north of Damascus. So he brought back all goods, and also brought back his brother Lot and his goods, as well as the women and the people. And the king of Sodom went out to meet him in the valley of Shava, after his return from the defeat of Shadur Lamer and the kings who were with him. Abram and Melchizedek. Then Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. He was the priest of God Most High, and he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abram of God Most High, possessor of heaven and earth, and blessed be the God Most High who has delivered your enemies into your hand. And he gave him a, a tithe for all. Now the king of Sodom said to Abram, Give me the persons and take the goods for yourself. But Abram said to the king of Sodom, I have raised my hand to the Lord God Most High, the possessor of heaven and earth, that I will take nothing from a th thread to a sandal strap, and that I will not take anything that is yours, lest you should say, I have made Abram rich, except only what the young men have eaten, and the portion of the men who went with me, Aner, Askol, and Mamra. Let them take their portion. Chapter 15, God's Covenant with Abram. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision, saying, Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield, your exceedingly great reward. But Abram said, Lord God, what will you give me, seeing I go childless, and the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus? Then Abram said, Look, you have given me no offspring. Indeed, one born in my house is my heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him, saying, This one shall not be your heir. But the one who will come from your own body shall be your heir. Then he brought him outside and said, Look now toward heaven, and count the stars if you are able to number them. And he said to him, So shall your descendants be. And he believed in the Lord, and he accounted it to him for righteousness. Then he said to him, I am the Lord who brought you out of Ur, of the Chaldeans, to give you this land to inherit it. And he said, Lord God, how shall I know that I will inherit it? So he said to him, Bring me a three-year-old heifer, a three-year-old female goat, a three-year-old ram, a turtle dove, and a pigeon. Then he bought all, brought all these to him and cut them in two, down the middle, and placed each piece opposite the other. But he did not cut the birds in two. And when the vultures came down on the carcasses, Abram drove them away. Now the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram, and behold, Horror and great darkness fell upon him. Then he said to Abram, Know certainly that your descendants will be strangers in a land that is not theirs, and will serve them, and they will afflict them for four, from four hundred years. And also the nation whom they serve I will judge. Afterward, they shall come out with great possessions. Now as for you, you shall go to your fathers in peace. You shall be buried at a good old age. But in the fourth generation they shall return here. For the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet complete. And it came to pass, when the sun went down and it was dark, that, behold, there appeared a smoking oven and a burning torch that passed between those pieces. On the same day, the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, To your descendants I have given this land from the river of Egypt to the great river, and the river of Euphrates, the Kenites, the Kenizzites, the Cadmonites, the Hedites, the Perizzites, the Rephaim, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Girgashites, and the Jebusites. Chapter 16, Hagar and Ishmael. Now Sarai, Abram's wife, had borne him no children. And she had an Egyptian maidservant whose name was Hagar. So Sarai said to Abram, See now, the Lord has restrained me from bearing children. Please go into my maid. Perhaps I shall obtain children by her. 
And Abram heeded the voice of Sarai. Then Sarai, Abram's wife, took Hagar, her maid, the Egyptian, and gave her to her husband, Abram, to be his wife. After Abram had dwelt ten years in the land of Canaan. So he went into Hagar, and she conceived. And when she saw that she had conceived, her mistress became despised in her eyes. Then Sarai said to Abram, My wrong be upon you. I gave my maid into your embrace, and when she saw that she had conceived, I became despised in her eyes. The Lord judged between you and me. So Abram said to Sarai, Indeed your maid is in your hand. Do to her as you please. And when Sarai dealt harshly with her, she fled from her presence. Now the angel of the Lord found her by a spring of water in the wilderness, by the spring on the way to Shur. And he said, Hagar, Sarai's maid, where have you come from and where are you going? She said, I am fleeing from the presence of my mistress, Sarai. And the angel of the Lord said to her, return to your mistress and submit yourself under her hand. Then the angel of the Lord said to her, I will multiply your descendants exceedingly so that they shall not be counted for multitude. And the angel of the Lord said to her, Behold, you are with child, and you shall bear a son. You shall call him Ishmael, because the Lord has heard your affliction. He shall be a wild man. His hand shall be against every man, and every man's hand against him. And he shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren. Then she called the name of the Lord who spoke to her, You are the God who sees. For she said, Have I also here seen him who sees me? Therefore the well was called Bir Lahai Roy. Observe, it is between Kadesh and Bered. So Hagar bore Abram a son, and Abram named his son, whom Hagar bore, Ishmael. Abram was 86 years old when Hagar bore Ishmael to Abram. Chapter 17, The Sign of the Covenant When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am Almighty God, walk before me and be blameless, and I will make my covenant with you. And I will make my covenant between me and you, and mu will multiply you exceedingly. And then Abram fell on his face, and God talked with him, saying, As for me, behold, my covenant is with you, and you shall be a father of many nations. No longer shall your name be called Abram, but shall your name sh shall be Abraham, for I have made you a father of many nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and the kings shall come from you. And I will establish my covenant between me and you and your descendants after you in their generations for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and your descendants after you. Also, I give to you and your descendants after you the land in which you are a stranger, all the land of Canaan, as an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. And God said to Abraham, As for you, you shall keep my covenant, you and your descendants after you throughout their generations. This is my covenant, which you shall keep between me and you and your descendants after you. Every male child among you shall be circumcised, and you shall be circumcised in the flesh of your foreskins, and it is a sign of the covenant between me and you. He who is eight days old among you shall be circumcised, every male in your generations. He who is born in your house or bought with money from any foreigner who is not your descendant. He who is born in your house and he who is bought with your money must be circumcised. As in the flesh of his foreskin, that person shall be cut off from his people. He has broken my covenant. Then God said to Abraham, As for Sarah, your wife, you shall not call her, her name Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name, and I will bless her and also give you a son by her. Then I will bless her, and she shall be a mother of nations. King of people shall be from her. Then Abraham fell on his face and laughed and said in his heart, Shall a child be born to a man who is 100 years old? And shall Sarah, who is 90 years old, bear a child? And Abraham said to him, Oh, that Ishmael might live before you. Then God said, No. Sarah, your wife, shall bear you a son, and you shall call him Isaac. I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant, and with his descendants after him. And as for Ishmael, I have heard you. Behold, I have blessed him, and will make him fruitful, and will multiply him exceedingly. 
He shall beget twelve princes, and I will make him a great nation. But my covenant I will establish with Isaac, whom Sarah shall bear to you, and at this set time next year. Then he finished talking with them, and God went up from Abraham. So Abraham took Ishmael, his son, all who, who were born in his house, and all who were bought with his money, every male among the men of Abraham's house, and circumcised the flesh of their foreskins that very same day, as God had said to him. Abraham was ninety-nine years old and he, when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin, and Ishmael was thirteen years old when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. That very same day, Abraham was circumcised and his son Ishmael, and all the men in, of his house, born in the house or bought with money from a foreigner, were circumcised with him. Chapter 18, The Son of Promise Then the Lord appeared to him by the Tarabin trees of Mamre, as he was sitting in the tent door in the heat of the day. So he lifted his eyes and looked, and behold, three men were standing by him. And when he saw them, he ran from the tent door to meet them and bowed himself to the ground and said, My Lord, if I have not found favor in your sight, do not pass on by your servant. Please let a little water be brought and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree. And I will bring you a morsel of bread that you may refresh your hearts. After that, you may pass by, inasmuch as you have come to your servant. They said, Do as you have said. So Abraham hurried into the tent to Sarah and said, Quickly made, make ready three measures of fine meal, knead it and make cakes. And Abraham ran to the herd, took a tender and good calf, gave it to a young man, and he hastened to prepare it. So he took butter and milk and a calf which he had prepared and set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree as they ate. Then they said to him, Where is Sarah, your wife? So he said, Here, in the tent. And he said, I will certainly return to you according to the time of life. And behold, Sarah, your wife, shall have a son. Sarah was listening in the tent door which was behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old, well advanced in age, and Sarah had passed the age of childbearing. Therefore Sarah laughed within herself, saying, After I have grown old, shall I have the pleasure of my Lord being old also? And the Lord said, said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I surely bear a child since I am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the appointed time I will return to you, according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. But Sarah denied it, saying, I did not laugh, for she was afraid. And he said, No, but you did laugh. Abraham intercedes for Sodom. Then the men rose from there and looked towards Sodom, and Abraham went with them to send them on the way. And the Lord said, <clears throat> Shall I hi hide from Abraham what I am doing? Since Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. For I have known him, in order that he may command his children and his household after him, that they keep the way of the Lord, to do righteousness and justice, that the Lord may bring to Abraham what he has spoken to him. And the Lord said, Because the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grave, I will go down now and see whether they have done altogether according to the outcry against it that has come to me. And if not, I will know. Then the men turned away from there and went towards Sodom. But Abraham stood before the Lord. And Abraham came near and said, would you also destroy the righteous with the wicked? Suppose there were 50 righteous within the city. Would you also destroy the place and not spare it for the 50 righteous that were in it? Far be it from you to do such a thing as this, to slay the righteous with the wicked, so that the righteous should be as the wicked. Far be it from you. Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? So the Lord said, If I find so dumb 50 righteous within the city, then I will spare all the place for their sakes. Then Abraham answered and said, Indeed now, I who, uh, who am but dust and ashes have taken up by myself to speak to the Lord. Suppose there were five less than the fifty righteous. Would you destroy all of the city for the lack of five? So he said, If I find there forty-five, I will not destroy it. And he spoke to him yet again and said, Suppose there should be forty found there. So he said, I will not do for the sake of forty. Then he said, let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak. Suppose thirty should be found there. So he said, I will not do it 
if I find 30 there. And he said, Indeed now, I have taken upon myself to speak to the Lord. Suppose 20 should be found there. So he said, I will not destroy it for the sake of 20. Then he said, Let the Lord, let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak but once more. Should 10 be found there? And he said, I will not destroy it for the sake of 10. So the Lord went his way as soon as he had finished speaking with Abraham. And Abraham returned to his place. Chapter 19, Sodom's Depravity Now the two angels came to Sodom in the evening, and Lot was sitting in the gate of Sodom. When Lot saw them, he rose to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. And he said, Here now, my lords, please turn into your servant's house and spend the night and wash your feet. Then you may rise early and go on your way. And they said, No, but we will spend the night in the open square. But he insisted strongly. So they turned into him and entered his house. Then he made them a feast and baked unleavened bread, and they ate. Now before they lay down, the men of the city, the men of Sodom, both the old and young, all the people from every quarter surrounded the house. And they called to Lot and said to him, Where are the men who came to you tonight? Bring them out to us that we may know them carnally. So Lot went out to them through the doorway, shut the door behind him and said, Please, my brethren, do not do, do so wickedly. See now, I have two daughters who have not known a man. Please, let me bring them out to you and you may do to them as you wish. Only do nothing to these men since this is the reason they have come under the shadow of my roof. And they said, stand back. Then they said, this one came in to stay here, and he keeps acting as a judge. Now we will deal worse with you than with them. So they pressed hard against the man Lot and came near to break down the door. But the men reached out their hands and pulled Lot into the house with them and shut the door. And they struck the men who were at the doorway of the house with blindness, both small and great so that they became weary trying to find the door. Sodom and Gomorrah destroyed. Then the man said to Lot, Have you anyone else here? Son-in-law, your sons, your daughters, and whomever you have in the city, take them out of this place, for we will destroy this place, because the outcry against them has grown great before the face of the Lord, and the Lord has sent us to destroy it. So Lot went out and spoke, and spoke to his sons-in-law, who had married his daughters and said, Get up, get out of this place, for the Lord will destroy this city. But to his sons-in-law, he seemed to be joking. <clears throat> when the morning dawned, the angels urged Lot to hurry, saying, Arise, take your wife and your two daughters who are here, lest you be consumed in the punishment of the city. And while he lingered, the man took hold of his hand, his wife's hand, and the hands of his two daughters the Lord being merciful to him, and they brought him out and set him outside the city. So it came to pass, when they had brought him down outside, that he said, Escape for your life. Do not look behind, nor you stay anywhere in the plain. Escape to the mountains, lest you be destroyed. Then Lot said to them, Please know, my lords, indeed now your servant has found favor in your sight, and you have increased your mercy which you have shown me by saving my life. But I cannot escape to the mountains, lest some evil overtake me and I die. See now, this city is near enough to flee to, and it is a little one. Please let me escape there, and my soul shall live. And he said to him, See, I have favored you concerning this thing also, in that I will not overthrow this city for which you have spoken. Hurry, escape there, for I cannot do anything until you arrive there. Therefore the name of the city was called Zor. The sun had risen up the earth when Lot entered Zor. Then the Lord rained brimstone and fire on Sodom and Gomorrah from the Lord out of the heavens. So he overthrew those cities and all the plain, all the inhabitants of the cities, what grew on the ground. But his wife looked back behind him, and she became a pillar of salt. And Abraham went early in the morning to the place where he had stood before the Lord. Then he looked towards Sodom and Gomorrah and toward all the land of the plain. And he saw, and behold, the smoke of the land which went up like the smoke of a furnace. And it came to pass, when God destroyed the cities of the plain, that God remem remembered Abraham and sent Lot out of the midst of the overthrow, when he overthrew the cities in which Lot had dwelt. The Descendants of Lot 
Then Lot went up of Zor and dwelt in the mountains, and his two daughters were with him, for he was afraid to dwell in Zor. And he and his two daughters dwelt in the cave. Now the firstborn said to the younger, Our father is old, and there is no man on the earth to come in to us. Is the custom of all the earth. Come, let us make our father drink wine, and we will lie with him, that we may preserve the lineage of our father. So they came. They made their father drink wine that night, and the firstborn went in and lay with her father, for he did not know when she lay down and when she arose. It happened on the next day that the firstborn said to the younger, Indeed, I have I laid with my father last night. Let us make him drink wine tonight also, and you go in and lie with him, that we may preserve the lineage of our father. Then they made their father drink wine that night also, and the younger arose and lay with him. And he did not know when she lay down or when she arose. Thus both the daughters of Lot were with child by their father. The firstborn bore a son and called his name Moab. He is the father of the Moabites to this day. And the younger, she also bore a son and called his name ben Ami. He is the father of the people of Ammon to this day. Chapter 20, Abraham and Abimelech. And Abraham journeyed from there to the south, and dwelt between Kadesh and Shur, and stayed in Gerar. Now Abraham said to his wife, She is my sister. And Abimelech, king of Gerar, went and took Sarah. But God came to Abimelech in a dream by night, and said to him, Indeed you are a dead man, because of the woman whom you have taken, for she is a, while a man's wife. But Abimelech had come near her, had not now come near her, and he said, Lord, Will you slay a righteous man, a righteous nation also? Did he not say to me, she is my sister? And she even herself said, he is my brother. In the integrity of my heart and innocence of my hands, I have done this. And God said to him in a dream, yes, I know that you did this in the integrity of your heart. For I also withheld you from sinning against me. Therefore, I did not let you touch her. Now, therefore, restore the man's wife, for he is a prophet. And he will pray for you, and you shall live. But if you do not restore her, know that you shall surely die, and all who are yours. So Abimelech rose early in the morning, called all his servants, and told all these things in their hearing. And the men were very much afraid. And Abimelech called Abraham and said to him, What have you done to us? How have I offended you, that you have brought on me and on my kingdom a great sin? You have done deeds to me that ought not to be done. Then Abimelech said to Abraham, What did you have in view that you have done this thing? And Abraham said, Because I thought, Surely the fear of God is not in this place, and they will kill me on account of my wife. But indeed she is truly my sister. She is the daughter of my father, but not the daughter of my mother. And she became my wife. And it came to pass, when God caused me to wander from my father's house, that I said to her, This is your kindness that you should do for me. In every place, wherever we go, say of me, he is my brother. Then Abimelech took sheep, oxen, and male and female servants, and gave them to Abraham. And he restored Sarah, his wife, to him. And Abimelech said, See, my land is before you. Dwell where it pleases you. Then to Sarah he said, Behold, I have given your brother a thousand pieces of silver. In the, indeed, this vindicates you before all who are with you and before everybody. Thus she was rebuked. So Abraham prayed to God, and God healed Abimelech, his wife, and his female servants. Then they bore children, for the Lord had closed up all the wombs of the house of Abimelech because of Sarah, Abraham's wife. Chapter 21, Isaac is born. And the Lord visited Sarah, as he had said, and the Lord did for Sarah, as he had spoken. For Sarah conceived and bore Abraham a son in his old age at the set time of which God had spoken to him. And Abraham called the name of his son, who was born to him, whom Sarah bore to him, Isaac. Then Abraham circumcised his son Isaac when he was eight days old, as God had commanded him. Now Abraham was 100 years old when his son Isaac was born to him. And Sarah said, God has made me laugh, and all who hear will laugh with me. She also said, Who would have said to Abraham that Sarah would nurse children? For I have borne him a son in his old age. Hagar and Ishmael depart. So the child grew and has weaned, and Abraham made a great feast on the same day that Isaac has weaned. 
And Sarah saw the son of Hagar, the Egyptian, whom she had borne to Abraham's coughing. Therefore she said to Abraham, Cast out this bond woman and her son, for the son of this bond woman shall not be heir with my son, namely with Isaac. And the matter was very displeasing in Abraham's sight because of his son. But God said to Abraham, Do not let it be displeasing in your sight because of the lad or because of your bond woman. Whatever Sarah has said to you, listen to her voice. For in Isaac your seed shall be called. Yet I will also make a nation of the son of the bond woman, because he is your seed. So Abraham rose early in the morning, took bread and the skin of water, and putting it on her shoulder, he gave it and the boy to Hagar, and went her away, and sent her away. Then she departed and wandered in the wilderness of Beersheba. And the water in the skin was used up, and she placed the boy under one of the shrubs. Then she went and sat across from him at a distance of about a bowshot. For she said to herself, Let me not see the death of the boy. So she sat opposite him and lifted her voice and wept. And God heard the voice of the lad. Then the angel of God called to Hagar out of heaven and said to her, What ails you, Hagar? Fear not, for God has heard of the, vo the voice of the lad where he is. Arise, lift up the lad, and hold him with your hand, for I will make him a great nation. Then God opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water. And she went and filled the skin with water, and gave the lad a drink. So God was with the lad, who grew and dwelt in the wilderness, and became an archer. He dwelt in the wilderness of Paran, and his mother took a wife for him from the land of Egypt. A Covenant with Abimelech now it came to pass at the time that Abimelech and Pichol, Pichol, the commander of his army, spoke to Abraham, saying, God is with you in all that you do. Now therefore swear to me by God that you will not deal falsely with me, with my offspring, or with my posterity, but that according to the kindness that I have done to you, you will do to me and to the land in which you have dwelt. And Abraham said, I will swear. Then Abraham rebuked Abimelech because of a well, of water which Abimelech's servant has seized. And Abimelech said, I do not know who has done this thing. You did not tell me, nor had I heard of until today. So Abraham took sheep and oxen and gave them to Abimelech, and the two of them made a covenant. And Abraham set seven ewe lambs of the flock by themselves. When Abimelech asked Abraham, What is the meaning of these seven ewe lambs which you have set by themselves? And he said, you will take these seven ewe lambs from my hand, that they may be my witness that I have dug this well. Therefore he called the place Beersheba, because the two of them swore an oath there. Thus they made a covenant at Beersheba. So Abimelech rose with Pichol, the commander of his army, and they returned to the land of the Philistines. Then Abraham planted a tamarisk tree in Beersheba, and there called on the name of the Lord, the everlasting God. Then Abraham stayed in the land of the Philistines many days. Chapter 22, Abraham's faith confirmed. Now it came to pass after these things that God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, Here I am. Then he said, Take now your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah, Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. So Abraham rose early in the morning and saddled his donkey, and took two of his men with him, and Isaac his son, and he split the wood for the burnt offering, and arose and went to the place of which God had told him. Then on the third day Abraham lifted his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey. The lad and I will go yonder and worship, and we will come back to you. So Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on his son, I on his, Isaac his son and he took the fire in his hand and a knife and the two of them went together but Isaac spoke to Abraham his father and said my father and he said here I, here I am my son then he said look the fire and the wood but where is the lamp for a burnt offering and Abraham said my son God will provide for himself the lamb, the lamb for a burnt offering so the two of them went together then they came to the place of which God had told him, and Abraham built an altar there and placed the wood in order, and he bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched out his hand 
his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. So he said, Here I am. And he said, Do not lay your hand on the lad and or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. Then Abraham lifted his eyes and looked, and there behind him was a ram caught in the thicket by its horns. By its horns. So Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up for a burnt offering instead of his son. And Abraham called the name of the place, The Lord will provide, as it is said to this day. In the mouth of the Lord it shall be provided. Then the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time out of heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this thing, that have not withheld your son, your only son. Blessing I will bless you, and multiplying I will multiply your descendants as the stars of the heaven, and as the sand which is on the seashore, and your descendants shall possess the gate of their enemies. In your seed all the nations of the earth shall be blessed, because you have obeyed my voice. So Abraham returned to his young men, and they rose and went together to Beersheba, and Abraham dwelt at Beersheba. The family of Nahor. Now it came to pass after these things that it was told Abraham, saying, Indeed Milcah also has born children to your brother Nahor. Huz, his firstborn, Buzz, his brother, Kemuel, the father of Aram, Chesed, Hazo, Pildash, Jidlap, and Bethuel. <clears throat> and Bethuel begot Rebekah. These eight Milcah bore to Nahor, Abram's brother. His concubine, whose name was Ryuma, also bore Teba, Geham, Tahash, and Maaka. <clears throat> Chapter 23, Sarah's death and burial. Sarah lived 127 years. These were the years of the life of Sarah. So Sarah died at Kirjath Arba, that is Hebron, in the land of Canaan. And Abraham came to mourn for Sarah and to weep for her. Then Abraham took up and be from before his dead and spoke to the sons of Heth, saying, I am a foreigner and a visitor among you. Give me property for a burial place among you, that I may bury my dead out of my sight. And the sons of Heth answered Abraham, saying to him, Hear us, my lord, you are a mighty prince among us. Bury your dead in the choices of your burial places. None of us will withhold from you his burial place, that you may bury your dead. Then Abraham stood up and bowed himself to the people of the land, the sons of Heth. And he spoke with them, saying, If it is your wish that I bury my dead out of my sight, hear me and meet with Ephron, the son of Zohar, for me, that he may give me the cave of Machpelah, which he has, which is at the end of his field. Let him give it to me at the full price, as property for a burial place among you. Now Ephron dwelt among the sons of Heth, and Ephron the Hethite answered Abraham in the presence of the sons of Heth, all who entered at the gate of his city, saying, No, my lord, hear me. I have give I give you the field and the cave that is in it. I give it to you in the presence of the sons of my people. I give it to you. Bury your dead. Then Abraham bowed himself down before the, the people of the land, and he spoke to Ephron in the hearing of the people of the land, saying, If you will give it, please hear me. I will give you money for the field. Take it from me, and I will bury my dad there. And Ephron answered Abraham, saying to him, My lord, listen to me. The land is worth 400 shekels of silver. What is that between you and me? So bury your dad. And Abraham listened to Ephron. And Abraham weighed out the silver of Eph for Ephron, which he had named in the hearing of the sons of Heth, 400 shekels of silver, currency of the merchants. So the field of Ephron, which was in Machpelah, which was before Mamre, the field and the cave which was in it, and all the trees that were in the field, which were within all the surrounding borders, were deeded to Abraham as a possession in the presence of the son of Heth, before all who went in at the gate of his city. And after this, Abraham buried Sarah, his wife, in the cave of the field of Machpelah, before Mamre, that is Hebron, in the land of Canaan. So the field and the cave that is in it were deemed to Abraham by the sons of Heth as property for a burial place. Chapter 24, A Bride for Isaac Now Abraham was old, well advanced in age, and the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. So Abraham said to the oldest servant of his house, who ruled over all that he had, Please put your hand under my thigh, 
that I will make you swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and the God of the earth, that you will not take a wife from, for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites among whom I will I dwell. But you shall go to my country to enter my family and take a wife for my son Isaac. And the servant said to him, Perhaps the woman will not be willing to follow me to this land. Must I take your son, your son back to the land from which you came? But Abraham said to him, Beware that you do not take my son back there. And the Lord God of heaven, who took me from my father's house and from the land of my family, and who spoke to me and swore to me, saying, To your descendants I will give this land. He will send his angel before you, and you shall take a wife for my son from there. And if the woman is not willing to follow you, then you will be released from this oath. Only do not take my son back there. So the servant put his hand under the tie of Abraham, his master, and swore to him concerning this matter. Then the servant took ten of his master's camels and departed, for all his master's goods were in his hand. And he arose and went to Mesopotamia, to the city of Nahor. And he made his camels kneel down outside the city by a well of water at evening time, the time when women go out to draw water. Then he said, O Lord God of my master Abraham, please give me success this day and show kindness to my master Abraham. Behold, here I stand by the well of water, and the daughters of the men of the city are coming out to draw water. Now let it be that the young woman to whom I say, Please let down your pitcher that I may drink. And she says, Drink, and I will also give your camels a drink. Let her be the one you have appointed for your servant Isaac. And by this I will know that you have shown kindness to my master. And it happened, before he had finished speaking, that behold, Rebekah, who was born to Bethuel, son of Milcah, the wife of Nahor, Abram's brother, came out with her pitcher on her shoulder. Now the young woman was very beautiful to behold, a virgin. No man had known her. And she went down to the well, filled her pitcher, and came up. Now the servant ran to meet her and said, Please, let me drink a little water from your pitcher. So she said, Drink, my lord. Then she quickly let her pitcher down to her hand and give him a drink. And when she had finished giving him a drink, she said, I will draw water for your camels also until they have finished drinking. Then she quickly emptied her pitcher into the trough, ran back to, to the well to draw water, and drew for all his camels. And the man, wondering at her, remained silent, so as to know whether that the Lord had made his journey prosperous or not. So it was, when the camels had finished drinking, that the man took a golden nose ring weighing half a shekel, and two bracelets for her wrists weighing ten shekels of gold, and said, Whose daughter are you? Tell me, please, is there a room in your father's house for us to lodge? So she said to him, I am the daughter of Bethuel, Milcah's son, whom she bore to Nahor. Moreover, she said to him, We have both straw and feed enough and room to lodge. Then the man bowed his head and worshipped the Lord, and he said, Blessed be the Lord God of my master Abraham, who, had, who has not forsaken his mercy and his truth towards my master. As for me, being on the way, the Lord led me to the house of my master's brethren. So the young woman ran and told her mother's household these things. Now Rebekah had a brother whose name was Laban, and Laban was ran out to the man by the well. So it came to pass, when he saw the nose ring and the bracelets on his sister's wrist, then, and when he heard the words of his sister Rebekah, saying, Thus the man spoke to me, that he went to the man, and there he stood by the camels at the well. And he said, Come in, O blessed by the Lord. Why do you stand outside? For I have prepared the house and a place for the camels. Then the man came to, to the house, and he unloaded the camels, and provided straw and feed for the camels, and water to wash to wash his feet and the feet of the men who were with him. Food was set before him to eat, but he said, I will not eat until I have told about my errand. And he said, Speak on. <clears throat> so he said, I am Abraham's servant. The Lord has blessed my master greatly, and he has become great. And he has given him flocks and herds, silver and gold, male and female servants, and camels and donkeys. And Sarah, my master's wife, bore a son to my master when she was old, and to him he has given all that he has. Now my master made me swear, saying, You shall not take a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites, in whose land I dwell, 
but you shall go to my father's house and to my family and take a wife for my son. And I said to my master, perhaps the woman will not follow me. But he said to me, the Lord before whom I walk will send his angel with you and prosper your way. And you shall take a wife for my son, for my son, from my family and from my father's house. You will be clear from this oath when you arrive among my family. For if they will not give her to you, then you shall be released from my oath. And this day I came to the, to the well and said, O Lord God of my master Abraham, if you will now prosper the way in which I go, behold, I stand by the well of water. And it shall come to pass that when the virgin comes out to draw water and I say to her, Please, give me a little water from your pitcher to drink. And she says to me, Drink, and I will draw for your camels also. Let her be the woman from whom the Lord has appointed for my master's son. But before I had finished speaking in my heart, there was Rebecca coming out with her pitcher on her shoulder, and she went down to the well and drew water. And I said to her, Please let me drink. And she made haste and let her pitcher down from her shoulder and said, Drink, and I will give your camels a drink also. So I drank, and she gave the camels a drink also. Then I asked her and said, Whose daughter are you? And she said, The daughter of Bethuel, nay her son, from Mil whom Mil Milcah had borne to him. So I put the nose on the the nose ring on her nose and the bracelet on her wrists, and I bowed my head and worshipped the Lord, and blessed the Lord God of my master Abraham, who had led me in the way of truth, to take the daughter of my master's brother for his son. Now, if you will deal kindly and truly with my master, tell me, and if not, tell me that I may turn to the right hand or to the left. Then Laban and Bethuel answered and said, the thing comes from the Lord. We cannot speak to you either bad or good. Here is Rebecca before you. Take her and go, and let her be your ma master's son's wife, as the Lord has spoken. And it came to pass, when Abraham's servant heard, his word, heard their words, that he worshipped the Lord, bowing himself to the earth. Then the servant brought out jewelry of silver, jewelry of gold and clothing, and gave them to Rebecca. He also gave precious things to her brother and to her mother. And he said, and he and the men who were with him ate and drank and stayed all night. Then they arose in the morning and he said, Send me away to my master. But her brother and her mother said, Let the young woman stay with us a few days, at least ten. After that she may go. And he said to him, to, to them, Do not hinder me, since the Lord has prospered my way. Send me away so that I may go to my ma master. So they said, we will call the young woman and ask her personally. Then they, they called Rebecca and said to her, will you go with this man? And she said, I will go. So they sent away Rebecca and their sister and their nurse, and Abraham's servant and his man. And they blessed Rebecca and said to her, our sister, may you become the mother of thousands of ten thousands, and may your descendants possess the gates of those who hate them. Then Rebecca and her maids arose, and they rode on the camels and followed the man. So the servant took Rebecca and departed. Now Isaac came from the way of Bir Lahai Roy, for he dwelt in the south. And Isaac went out to meditate in the field in the evening, and he lifted his eyes and looked. And there the camels were coming. Then Rebecca lifted her eyes, and when she saw Isaac, she dismounted from her camel. For she had said to the servant, Who is this man walking in the field to meet us? The servant said, It is my master. So she took a veil and covered herself. And the servant told Isaac all the things that he had done. Then Isaac brought her into his mother, Sarah's tent, and he took Rebekah, and she became his wife, and he loved her. So Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. Chapter 25, Abraham and Keturah. Abraham again took a wife, and her name was Keturah. And she bore him Zimram, Jokshan, Medan, Midian, Ishbak and Shua. Jokshan begat Sheba and Dedan, and the sons of Dedan were Ashrim, Letushim, and Yomim. And the sons of Midian were Epha, Epher, Hanok, Abida, and Elda. All these were the children of Keturah. And Abraham gave all that he had to Isaac. But Abraham ge gave gifts to the sons of the concubines which Abraham had. And while he was still living, he sent them eastward, away from Isaac his son, to the country of the east. Abraham's death and burial. This is the sum of the years of Abraham's life which he had which he lived 175 years. 
Then Abraham breathed his last and died in a good old age, an old man and full of years, and was gathered to his people. And his sons Isaac and Ishmael buried him in the cave of Machpelah, which is before Mamre, in the field of Ephron, the son of the Zohar the Hittite, the field which Abraham purchased from the sons of Heth. Then Abraham was buried and, his, and Sarah his wife. And it came to pass after the death of Abraham that God blessed his son Isaac, and Isaac dwelt at Beer Lahai Roy. Of Ishmael and Isaac. Now this is the genealogy of Ishmael, Abraham's son, whom Hagar the Egyptian, Sarah's servant, bore to Abraham. And these were the names of the son, sons of Ishmael by their names, according to their generations. The firstborn of Ishmael, Nebajoth, then Kedar, Adbil, Mibsam, Mishma, Duma, Masa, Hadar, Tama, Jator, Nafesh, and Kedema. These were the sons of Ishmael, and these were their names by their towns and their settlements. Twelve princes according to their nations. These were the years of the life of Ishmael, 137 years, and he breathed his last and died and was gathered to his people. They dwelt from Havilah as far as Shur, which is east of Egypt, as you go toward Assyria. He died in the presence of all his brethren. This is the genealogy of Isaac, Abram's son. Abram begot Isaac. Isaac was 40 years old when he took Rebekah's wife, the daughter of Bethuel, the Syrian of Badan Aram, the sister of Laban, the Syrian. Now Isaac pleaded with the Lord for his wife because she was barren, and the Lord granted his plea, and Rebekah, his wife, conceived. But the children struggled together within her and said, If all is well, why am I like this? So she went to inquire of the Lord. And the Lord said to her, Two nations are in your womb. Two people shall be separated from your body. One people shall be stronger than the other, and the older shall serve the younger. So when her days were fulfilled for her to give birth, indeed there were twins in her womb. And the first came out red. He was like a hairy garment all over. So they called him Esau. Afterward, his brother came out and his hand and took hold of Esau's heel. So his name was called Jacob. Isaac was six years old when she bore them. So the boys grew, and Esau was a skillful hunter, a man of the field. Jacob was a mild man, dwelling in tents. And Isaac loved Esau because he ate of his game, but Rebekah loved Jacob. Esau sells his birthright. Now Jacob cooked a stew, and Esau came in from the field, and he was weary. And Esau said to Jacob, Please feed me with the same red stew, for I am weary. Therefore his name was called Edom. But Jacob said, Sell me your birthright as of this day. And Esau said, Look, I am about to die. So what is this birthright to me? Then Jacob said, Swear to me as of this day. So he swore to him, and sold his birthright to Jacob. And Jacob gave Esau bread and stew of lentils. Then he ate and drank, arose, and went his way. Then Esau despised his birthright. So that ends our reading for today. Um, come back again tomorrow for um, the, ne the next 12 chapters. Uh, uh, before we end, let us bow our head and let's have a closing prayer. Our dear Lord, Heavenly Lord and Father, we worship you this morning and we thank you for this opportunity to be able to read your words once again. May these words um, inculcate their message in our hearts and may we be able to apply it to our daily lives. May we be as faithful as Abraham, dear Father. Um, and may this reflect the, our service um, to your name as we as we continue our lives here on earth. Thank you once again for your blessings to this 100 days in Scripture. And may the messages that we share here be um, spread amongst all the people in Thailand that they will be able to know your name and worship you. Thank you for your love, dear Lord, and all these things we pray in Jesus' holy name. Amen.